Hey everyone, this is Greg Finn, Camel River Guide Service, and I really appreciate you tuning into my channel this week. I think you're going to enjoy today's program. I've had a lot of response from people who watched that video, How to Locate and Catch Crappie. Uh, thousands of people have watched that. It taught them how to go out with their, their graph and, and find uh, brush piles or build their own and how to locate fish and what they look like on the graph. And I had a lot of success in, in that video. Uh, because of that, I've had a lot of you viewers wanting to know, okay, Greg, now how do you build brush piles? How do you build these crappie hotels? And so I thought I'd spend a little bit of time with you today in doing that. Uh, before we get into how we build brush piles, I want to make something clear. Before you build your own crappie hotel or your brush pile so that you can catch crappie on it, what I'd like for you to do is make sure that you check your state, county, and uh, local uh, rules and regulations and, and laws on the subject. It, it may be in your state you're not allowed to build brush piles on your lake. I don't know. But you need to check that out make sure you're uh, in compliance with uh, whoever's in charge of, of those uh, areas. Sometimes states are okay with it, but maybe a certain lake is not okay with it. So make sure you check that out first. The second thing I wanna talk about just for a moment before we get into showing you how to build a, br a brush pile is I want you to understand something and something that's kind of a touchy subject with some, and that is the ownership of the brush pile. Whose brush pile or whose hotel is it once you put it in your lake. Well, you know what the truth is? Once you drop that brush pile in that water, once I drop the brush pile in the water, it's no longer your brush pile. And I know you think it is. I know you put a lot of hard work. We all do. But uh, I put them out here on Lake Sam Rayburn, and I guess what? My name is Greg Finn. It is not, Lake, it is not Sam Rayburn, and I was not Speaker of the House. <laughs> So once you drop the brush pile, you have to understand the lakes belong to everyone. We all have the privilege of fishing these lakes. And once you drop that brush pile down, you can might tell someone, hey, I put that brush pile in there, but you cannot say it is your brush pile. Or I cannot say it is my brush pile. We would be wrong in doing that. I know it's aggravating when you go out and you catch lots of crappie and someone sees you and seven o'clock the next morning, those people are on your brush pile. I understand that. But you know what? Uh, life is short. Let's just hope that they catch some fish and take home and have a nice dinner. And if someone is on your brush pile, all I can tell you is make sure you have more than one brush pile. They can't be on both of them at the same time, right? So keep a good attitude about it. The flip side of all that is this. If you're learning how to crappie fish recently and you're wanting to learn how to put out brush piles or how to find them and how to locate brush piles, what I recommend you do is build your own brush pile. And that's why I'm doing this video today. I want to teach you how to build your own brush pile, okay? Um, I won't say that it's wrong or, or that it's a, unlawful to fish someone else's brush pile because it's not but it is unethical. Uh, it is not a nice thing to do. People work real hard putting these brush piles out. They spend time, resources, money, a lot of hard work to put them out and get them just right. And then really to go out and see someone on your brush pile, it's pretty demoralizing. It's pretty aggravating. All because they know all you did was just follow them around and, and greedily see where the brush pile is. And, and folks, that's really what it is. So what I want to help everyone do today is to learn how to build your own crappie hotels, your own brush piles. Go out there and spend the work. You know, anybody can just pull in a fish, but to build a habitat for that fish, to be able to know what that fish will bite, to know what time of the day or what time of the year is most productive for that brush pile or that crappie hotel, that's fishing, see? That's fishing. I have friends that build their own jigs. And you know what? That's, they get a big kick out of doing that, to build something with their own hands that'll catch those fish. See, that's fishing. Not just pulling in the fish, filleting it, and frying it up. That's, that, that is fishing, but that's not real fishing. So today, I want to help you to build your own brush piles. Go out there and spend the work. Do the, do the uh, homework. 
what it takes to do that. So let's get into showing you what I do. First of all, I'm back in a creek here and I've got uh, a lot of willow trees. I have a big willow tree right here and I use willow limbs. I prune limbs. Now don't get me wrong, I do not cut down a whole tree. I don't cut down a big old limb. I prune trees because I want them to grow back so that I can use the tree for future use. So prune it just like you would pruning something in uh, maybe a tree in your own, your own uh, place, your own property. Prune it. Be careful how you prune it. Use those limbs for your brush pile. I use willow trees because I, I use uh, jig fishing or with minnows a lot and I don't get hung up. The, the limbs seem to work real well. Also, the leaves stay on uh, the, the limbs, it seems like, longer on, on willow trees than they do other types of trees. Willow tree attracts fish, they do real well. And in my part of the country, that's what's most successful is willow limbs. And so that's what I do. Now, uh, what, do I, what do I sink them with? Well, I use 50 pound sacks of sand. And you'll see right behind me this sandbag in here and you'll, I'll show it to you a little bit uh, closer later on. But it's just uh, sandbags that you can buy online at Amazon. They're the same type of sandbags that people use in disasters when sandbagging their, their, their homes to keep the water out. Buy those bags, fill them up with sand, dirt, whatever you have. Tie them up, put them in your boat. They don't scratch up your boat and they do sink brush very, very quickly. Cutting the limbs. I use two tools. First of all, I use a battery operated uh, sawzall and uh, to, to cut the limbs and it works out real well. I don't use a chainsaw because it would, you know, just too much sawdust all over the place. Plus you make a lot of noise out here. The second thing I use is a cordless drill and with a 3 8 bit in it. And I'm gonna show you why I do that in just a moment. How do I attach the limbs, the pruned limbs to, the, um, to my sandbag? I use ties. Long ties. I had, sometimes I have to tie two of them together because usually I'll put either two or three limbs on a sandbag to attach it. Now, how do I get the, the the crappie brush pile to stand straight up? Well, of course, the sandbag is going to weigh it down. You need something at the top to hold it straight up. And what I use is these white gallon jugs. And again, I tie them with, with ties. So I'm going to go through the whole operations with you. So bear with me, it's the first time I've ever done this. Bear with me um, and, and maybe you'll learn something and I hope you are able to put down your own brush piles, fish your own. It's, it's nothing more rewarding than building your own crappie hotel. You build your own, you, you say, yeah, I did that. I built it and now I'm catching fish of it. Life is good. So we'll get started. First thing I'm gonna show you how to do here is take a sandbag and position it in, in your boat. Now, we're going to make a little bit of a mess with all the sawing and, and everything that goes into it. That's why I like my Ranger RT-188 and I ordered it without carpet. Uh, that way, when I'm going down the road, all the little limbs and leaves blows out of the, of the boat. And when I get home, I just wash it out with a water hose. So that's what I prefer. Some people have boats that are strictly for brush boats, but this is the same boat I fish with, the same boat I take uh, people out in, my guide, uh, my, my guest, uh, on my guiding, and so I, I, I just use this boat. I do take out the back seat, because as you can see, this is where I'm gonna haul my brush piles out to my locations. First thing I'm gonna do is take a sandbag, back to the back, I'm going to put it right about there. Half on and half off. You'll see why later on. The second thing I need to do is to have uh, a knife available uh, because I have to make some slits in the sandbag to be able to attach my limbs. So I just want to have this available right there. And uh, I'm going to have my ties available so I can reach them very quickly. 
And now we're ready actually to cut a limb. So I'm gonna take my sawzall and I've got one right here picked out. Remember, we're not cutting whole trees, we're just pruning limbs. Now I have my XI-5, so I can just ease it over here to where I want to be and uh, just right there. Get over in position and I'm going to cut this limb right here. There we go. I'm going to set that sawzall down right there. Now that limb, I'm going to set my brush piles in about 16, 17 foot. I don't want a limb really over about uh, six or seven feet. So I'm even going to trim this one up just a little bit more to about right here. Now what I'm going to do is to take my cordless drill and I'm going to cut a hole right in the end of this. See that hole I have in there? That works out real good for running those ties through that. Now I'm going to go position this limb where I want it to be on the boat. Back here in the back. Now, I think I'll cut another one at least. And so, let me see if I can find another one. I see one over here I'd like to get. So let me kind of throw over to it right quick. Best thing this to, to, to do here is just take your time, don't get in a big hurry. You know, just enjoy the work. Okay. I see a little limb here that I sure would like to have. Let me see if I can reach it. take my drill I'm just gonna put a little hole see that now I'm gonna position this one this limb here I'm just gonna go ahead and throw away it doesn't really do us any good but now you can see that's gonna really make some nice habitat so I'm gonna take this limb back here Thing. Maybe one more, huh? Let's see if we can put one more on that on that sandbag. And I have another one right here I like. Let me get myself over here back in position. We'll cut one more. Remember, all we're doing is pruning. We're not cutting big trees down. So I'm going to prune this one right here. There we go. I'm going to cut a little hole there. Alright. And we're going to put that one in position. Now, sometimes when I have two or three limbs together, I actually have to put two ties together. But whatever it takes, right? I'm going to get back here and I'm going to take my knife 
And I'm gonna make a I'm gonna make a little slit in the bag. Right about there. And try to get one of these ties through there. There it goes. Now I want that tie to go through that limb. There it goes. And let's see if we can get to another limb. Okay, so those are attached real good to the sandbag. Again, I want to put my sandbag half on, half off, just like this. Those are attached. Now I'm going to take another tie, and I'm going to take this jug here and just try to get uh, at least two of these limbs, if not all three, kind of tied together. Just something like that right there. And tie that together. Make sure that lid is tight so it won't fill up with water. And that's ready to go. And I didn't make too big of a mess. And uh, so now I'm going to go out to the lake and I'm going to drop those brush piles. This particular brush pile. Normally when I'm building a brush pile or a crappie hotel, I'll put two or three of these per spot. And I, I choose my spots real carefully. Sometimes I'll put them um, uh, kind of close to a drop off. You might remember the video I did with how to locate and catch crappie. I put that particular brush pile like on a point that went out into the river. Sometimes I just put them on flat that's kind of close to a creek. Uh, this particular one up here, the creek is not too far away, but uh, this one here is kind of next to a tree. But I don't always put them around trees. With today's electronics, a lot of people will find them real quick if you don't kind of put them uh, where you need to. But again, if they do find it, don't make a big deal about it. So we're going to ease on out, and uh, I'll show you what I'm talking about on dropping the brush pile. So here I am using my XI-5 to position me so I can drop this brush pile. Now if you look behind me, do you see that the land behind me with all the uh, cypress trees? That's where I've been catching my spawning crappie. The last video I did uh, last week was catching spawning crappie. Well, that's where we got them in those in those uh, cypress trees. They're still there. The water temperature. We had a little cold front come in today. The water temperature is 67 degrees. I don't know if they're going to still be there or not. But in the meantime, I've got a little downtime here. I'm putting this brush pile right here, pretty close to where those spawning fish have been. That way, they just what is that about? 300 yards so now all they got to do is come out to one of my brush piles here and this is where they'll be here all year i'm sitting the boat right now is in about 18 feet of water and so i'm going to put this brush pile down and, and when i get it down with what about seven or eight feet that means what's eight from 18 it's going to be 10 8 10 feet from the top of the water so when i later on in this summer when i drop my jig down or my meta down I know I'm going to be fishing at this level of water around 8 or 10 feet, probably around 10 feet. We're, the lake this summer will probably go down about another 2 or 3 feet. I have to take that in consideration. So uh, I, I, don't want it, I don't want my top of my brush to be no more than 6 or 7 feet. Uh, I, 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 I don't want that much. I want, I want at least that much water over the top of my brush pile. I'm not always going to fish around the very tip top of my brush pile. But uh, I don't want to get the, I obviously don't want the brush coming out of the water in case we get low water, uh, the water goes down. So think about all, there's a lot of factors here, folks, but this is all part of fishing. This is what we do. So I'm going to 
get right up here and I'm going to get ready to drop this brush pile down. And now you understand me being where I am. I'm not ever going to get out of my seat here. You can see why I put this sack where I did on the edge of the boat. I'm, when I get positioned up here, I'm merely going to flip it over and then let it go. And then after I get through, we'll take, we'll drive back over and I'll let you see what it looks like on the trail. So I hope this works out pretty good and hope you can see everything. It's kind of hard to hold the camera and I know there's a little bit of a glare on it. But I'm going to use my XI-5 and troll right over this area here. You notice uh, we're in about 18 feet of water. And let's see if we can pick up those brush piles I just put down. Up oh, here they come. Here they come on the screen. There they are. That's the one I just dropped, folks. I just dropped it. And see how it's standing up nice and straight? Actually, that's both of them. The second one you're seeing on the screen is one I dropped the other day. The first one is the one, actually the, the first one to your left is the one I dropped the other day. The big one is the one I just dropped. Now it looks like that's crappie, but it's not. Those are fresh leaves on that willow tree. But I guarantee you, now top of that, if you'll notice, let's just stop the graph right there. In the top, let's go up here at the top and go across. The top of the tree right there is right where I want it to be, about eight feet of water. Now we're probably going to go, we're probably going to lose about two foot of water uh, when the lake goes back down to normal, two to three feet. So then the top of that tree is going to be in probably about uh, six, six, maybe even five feet down. But uh, it's going all the way to the bottom too. So now I've got a wide variety of fish. Uh, of a crappie hotel to fish and I guarantee you this crappie hotel is going to produce thousands of crappie over the next few years so I'm excited about it by the way this brush pile this crappie hotel the way I just built it will last at least for the next five or six years and then all I gotta do is just freshen it up a little bit beautiful crappie hotel only 300 yards from where I've been catching spawning crappie on the bank in, in the cypress trees so there you go we just built a crappie hotel and today I'm going to probably build about another three today uh, out here that's uh, that's what, I, what I'll need to be able to assure my guests that we're going to catch crappie uh, this summer uh, it's been a pleasure to bring you this video. A lot of you have asked, how do you build crappie hotels? I saw it work. I knew you could do it. I know what they look like. I know what crappie look like when they're on them, but I don't know how to build them. Well, now you do. And I hope you really enjoy it. Just to recap, make sure, number one, you check with your local state laws and regulations about it. Number two, when you drop it, it's no longer yours. You got to share it with everyone else. Number three, the right thing to do is to build your own and not use someone else's. And number four, be careful when you're doing it. 
you're handling things that uh, anytime you're doing something that's new and for the first time there's there's room for mistakes take your time be careful you're dealing with power tools you're dealing with walking close to the edge of the boat just be careful and, and and just methodically and once you've done it like I have dozens and dozens of times it's no big deal um, use the use the right kind of equipment and you'll be successful and uh, it's just something I like to pass on to other people this is a uh, very seldom done by guys showing other people how to build these brush piles but it's my pleasure to bring it to you and I hope it helps you I really do this is Greg Finn. Thanks for tuning in to our channel. And if you haven't subscribed already, I encourage you to do that. If you want to do a guide trip with me, well, come on out. I'm Greg Finn at www.camoriverguideservice.com. And uh, I hope you enjoy it, today's program. These fish, about May 1st, all the way through the end of the summer, are going to be on these brush piles. So go to my website, camoriverguideservice.com. Go to page two, that's the rate page. Call it cost $100 to make the deposit. You can pay the balance anytime up until the day of the trip. And you'll see, it gives you all that information. You scroll on down, you'll see a calendar. And if it says guide trip, I'm already booked that day. But if it doesn't, if it's open, uh, you might want to think about uh, coming out that day and enjoying some fantastic crappie fishing. I also have a cottage available for you to stay in. So scroll on over, look at under accommodations. You'll see pictures of a real nice little two bedroom, one bath cottage for you to stay in. We have television, we have Wi-Fi service, and you'll really enjoy it. The next morning, all you gotta do is get in the truck with me. We'll come to the lake, we'll catch fish. I'll clean and, and fillet and bag your fish for you. We'll get them ready for your freezer. And you go on home and you can tell your friends what a great time you had. A couple days later, you'll be getting a video from me. And it's a video like you see on all the rest of these people that come out here having a good time fishing with me. And then that's memories. We're making memories for them to share with their friends.